Faith is not a whim. Amen. Look, God uses this. In Romans 4, 17, we're reminded how Abraham worshiped God. Before him who quickens the dead, he gives life to the dead and calls those things that be not, that don't appear as they were. Are you calling those things that be not as they were? Or you know how I like to make it a little more practical, like they already exist. Because if they were, then they are, right? And you got to call those things. When you were on an elevator and it wasn't moving and you press as hard as you want and you sit there and you, got, and you start cussing, and not, but you know, what's wrong with this elevator? And you sit in there and, you know, you frustrated. And then someone gets on the elevator with you. You were pushing the floor you were on because you were distracted. You weren't intentional. You weren't purposeful. And you complain that the elevator ain't working. You pushing it all harder. That ain't that don't help. Talking louder don't help. You got a call for what you don't got. You can't be on floor one and press one and think the elevator's going anywhere. You got to be in the elevator on floor one or whatever floor you're on and choose a floor that doesn't appear before it moves. And people spend all their time calling it like it is. That's why you stuck. You ain't moving. Life, yeah. You got to call things that be not penthouse. Up you go. Because you made a demand. You called things that be not. You're not. It does not appear. Does it appear you're on a penthouse? No, I'm in the garage. I'm in the basement. It's not appearing. So what? You just say, oh, basement. Basement, basement, basement. Now, unless you like the basement, like you like the view and the perspective from the basement, 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 you hit penthouse and away you go. Oh, but how can you do that? Penthouse isn't there. That's the point because you want to go to penthouse. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So now watch. Our faith, and look, faith is meant to be released. Faith is active. It's a force. Our faith is released how? Like you shoot it, you activate it, you pull that trigger. How? We see it again and again and again and again. It just, it really becomes like overwhelming, so to speak. When you look in the word about how much it deals with your mouth. Maybe you've never done it. So I've tried to sit there and record everything that has to do with our words. I just throw the pencil away. It's like, let me just carry my Bible around. Let me just start observing the word. Every place. Get your mouth right. Keep your lips straight. Keep your tongue on point. Watch your words. (laughs) All over the place. Why? God's not telling us all this to make it that way. Because that's how people make it a challenge. No, God ain't testing you. God doesn't tempt or test anybody like that. He's telling us all this about work because it's that important because that's the way it already is. That's how the system is created. So watch your words. Choose your words. Use your words. Shut your mouth. That's almost a scripture. Amen. We'll, maybe, maybe we'll see him. Praise the Lord. But it's so powerful because this is the way it is. This is the system. We were talking last week, and I know people can hear what they, they get deceived and hear what they want to hear. I mean, we can't say nothing. You can't say. You can say everything. Right. That's right. Amen. That's life. Because you got to understand whatever you say is coming to pass. <laughs> you don't have to try to make that happen. It is, including everyone who says, well, I tried that, and it doesn't work. Just did. <laughs> well, life and death being in the power of the tongue, I try, that, that don't work for me. It just did. It is. It always is. Always. You got 2 Corinthians 4, right? 
our faith is released, and we got the same faith as God. Oh, my goodness. The same faith as every believer, right? We studied this already. And our faith is released how? By our words. Look at 2 Chron Chronicles, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. You got to say, I got it. Yes. You should. Helped you a little bit. Let's go ahead and read it together. It says, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, and therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore speak. That's ad infinitum. That's continuously. Yeah, I believe. So this is what I say. Yeah, I believe. So this is what I say. So what you say is what you truly believe. Yes, what you say is what you truly believe. Okay? You can run back all those verses we talked about this morning already. And that, that's the whole point. Well, I didn't mean, you know, I really wanted to die when I said I'm sick to death. Sick and tired. Tickles me to death. I'm dying to go. Well, then what did you mean? Yes, you meant it. <laughs> yes, you believed it. Because out in abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I, we, see, don't, don't defend it. You're trying to defend something that's indefensible because we agree. We agree because you don't want death. <laughs> we agree, right? But you're going to have to change your vocabulary. Amen. Because notice what faith, what Jesus teaches about faith. Whosoever believes those things which they say shall come to pass, they shall have what they say. So if you're telling me that you don't believe death is coming, even though you said it, the bad thing about that is it's still coming, and you don't believe it. And you, out of all people, should believe everything you say. How dangerous is that for a person not to believe their own words? Then who are they? They don't know. They don't know who they are. They don't know their situation because they don't believe what they say. And that's been the trap. That's been the deception the enemy has gotten people stuck in. You can say whatever with impunity. You can say whatever it all work out. Yeah, it will.